two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello, welcome to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. It's Friday, it's Mark and James. And if you're watching on YouTube, in fact, if you're listening, you're gonna hear some hubbub in the background. It's all like a hubbub, 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 hubbub. hubbub. Um, We are back at the London Book Fair. You can see behind us one of the two grand halls here at Olympia in London. So the only thing I really remember about Olympia is every year it's the Horse of the Year show in here, isn't it? Is it? Don't you remember the Horse of the Year show from Olympia? Is it in here? Yes, in here. They put dirt down. Good grief. And they have uh, someone whose job it is to run out with a shovel every 10 minutes. John Dyer. (laughs) Where is John Dyer? John Dyer's in America. He's missing the London Book Fair. He's on holiday. As we speak, he's like this on a roller coaster at Universal, (laughs) uh, enjoying himself, and so he should. Um, Yeah, so the Book Fair, you do a lot of time on the Amazon stand when you're at these fairs. I do. uh, Talking to a lot of our community who come and say hello. We're going to have some drinks tomorrow night for people who do that. Do you get around? Do you go and visit Hatchet and the others? Hatchet. Hatchet. Um, Hatchet. I, I do, actually. I've got a meeting with Bonnier tomorrow. So uh, oh, okay. um, Bonnier Publishing have shown some interest in some stuff that I'm working on and are interested in talking to me about, about that. So I've got a meeting with them at half four tomorrow. Um, okay. Otherwise, I might wander around. You know, have a, I know a few people in the industry, so I might hop around and say hello. Press the flesh. Potentially. Well, we're going to talk publishing in this uh, this podcast episode. In our, in our podcast about publishing. In our podcast about publishing. No. Well, we talk about self-publishing, but this is publishing. But it's sort of, um, I can't use the word hybrid, because that does mean something different, obviously. But we're talking about a small, bespoke publishing company who operates in the way that an indie would operate. So a lot of Facebook advertising, a focus on mailing lists, um, but a fantastic attention to detail in terms of producing um, the books themselves, carefully selecting them, and I'm beside myself with excitement about this little company called Joffy Books. Yes, um, I've known about Jasper Joffy for a little while, so well, certainly about Joffy Books, because uh, they're quite hard to avoid on Amazon. Um, They're in the charts very highly, all of the books, most of the books quite, quite a lot of the time. And I've seen their ads on um, product pages, including mine. So um, Jasper took the ads course last year and has been u- using Facebook ads and Amazon ads very effectively since then and has sold a metric CRAP ton of yes. books since then. So it was, um, I reached out to him a month or two ago and said, would you like to come on the podcast? He said he would. Um, and uh, James interviewed him. And then, as we mentioned in the podcast last week, we had a little sit-down with him just uh, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And I had to calm James down subsequent to that because he is he is very enthusiastic about what Jess was doing. I've seen the future. And it's bright. I've got to wear shades. It is. Let's have a <laughs> let's hear from Jasper. Jasper, welcome to the uh, Self-Publishing Formula podcast. It's a real treat to have you on. I think we're going to um, learn a lot uh, from your experience over the last couple of years. Why don't you start off by telling people who you are and what it is that's happened uh, in your business? Hi, James. Um, I'm Jasper Joffe, and I started Joffe Books about four or five years ago. I mean, seriously. Um, Before that, I was actually an artist, a painter of pictures, Um, and it's been phenomenal. I mean, the growth every year has been doubling. Uh, in the last uh, 2017, we sold 1.4 million books, plus an equal amount of books read on Kindle Unlimited. Um, we've been working with such great authors like Joy Ellis, Helen Durant, uh, TJ Brereton, um, and our top-selling author, Joy Ellis, whose books are just you know really popular. She's alone sold a million books since she worked with us. Wow. And tell us a bit about the um, where you sit in terms of the old traditional industry, the new indie self-publishers, because like, I get the feeling the way you operate is somewhere in between. Well, yeah. I mean, actually, I came across Mark Dawson in self-publishing, and I've learned a lot from it. And so when you told me you wanted me to be on, I was really excited. <laughs> um, in fact, I've only ever read the transcripts of all the interviews. I never watched the podcast. So Strangely enough, this is strange to be yeah. in physical form with you. Um, well, 
We are a publisher who works not as a, obviously a self-publisher. Sometimes people go, are you a self-publisher? No, we don't publish our own books. We publish other people's books. Um, but we have some of the same flexibility, I think, as a self-publisher. So we work exclusively with Amazon. Um, uh, we only sell through Amazon, so that simplifies our distribution. I mean, we found that to be uh, just an exceptional and simple way of selling lots of books. Um, but we work with lots of authors. We pay them royalties, so like a traditional publisher. We tend not to pay advances. Um, uh, I don't know. I think the difference is we don't have all the infrastructure and sort of uh, traditions is maybe the wrong word of an old old-fashioned publisher. We... We just sort of do the things that we need to do to get the books out to the public rather than probably all the other stuff that other publishers do. Yeah, I, I suppose one important difference is your lean organisation because you're, you're just starting up and you're agile and you don't have the, um, yeah, the tall buildings in, in West London or wherever um, to have to pay for every day. Does that have an effect? I don't, Obviously, um, I realise there's commercial sensitivities about the deals that you do, but yeah. that, that, does that have an effect on the amount of royalty that you take? Uh, yes, I think so. I mean, I know I can't obviously give exact details. That's confidential between us and the authors, but... Uh, we pay, as far as I've seen from traditional publishing contracts, quite a significant portion more to the author. The other thing is we spend money on the things that help the books do well and make the books good. So, of course, we, we get loads and loads of submissions and we only choose a very few of those authors to work with. But the money we spend, we spend a lot of money on editing and a lot of time on editing. And then we spend a lot of money on advertising. Um, and we don't spend money on other stuff. <laughs> so, you know, my office looks a bit bare because there's no need to have, I don't know, whatever anyone else spends money on. But I don't understand what the other stuff is all for, really, yeah. because we want really great books. We want to reach the reader and we want to reach as many readers as possible. So that's as far as I can see. I mean, I'm willing to learn, but what else would you want to spend money on? Yeah, well, I think that's, I think that's great. I think it's really exciting. And I, I suspect, although um, you, you sit in your office and you say it doesn't look great, all the rest of it looks fine in your office, by the way. <laughs> but I suspect what you, you are starting to realise is that you are in the vanguard of that type of industry because I don't think, I, my personal view is I can't see the big traditional publishers surviving in the long term. I think people either go indie or people like your organisation will come along, a much fairer split in terms of, I mean, it's just, it's just not right that the person who writes the book ends up with something like 8% of the cover price coming to them. For me, that's unfair, an unfair split, because the cre I know it's difficult marketing and selling a book, but creating it has got to be worth more than that, right? Yes, the author comes first. I mean, without authors, I always say that to our authors. I say, look, we do our job and we try and do it as well as possible and we pay attention to every little detail. But you've written the book, you're the important person. You've put all that work in, you've put months of writing, and we think you're really good at writing books. So, you know, we just want to get you out to the people and get you selling your books because you've done the amazing bit. Um, look, I'm not, I don't see there's a, a sort of war between indie and, you know, trad publishing. I think I love reading books. I don't care whether they're on Kindle or in paperback or, you know, if I read them on my phone, actually, I like reading on Kindle the best, but there's room for everyone. Whether that model of doing all those things that traditional publishers do will hold up or not, I, I mean, honestly, I hope they do because I want to read some of the books they produce. I want to read some of the books that indie publishers and self-publishers. I don't think there has to be a hierarchy like, you know, oh, I've got a trad publishing contract. I'm publishing indie. I'm self-publishing. What matters is the book is good. Yeah. I just think about the fairness to the author in terms of, of how the traditional industry works at the moment and whether there needs to be an adjustment. So not necessarily that they won't be around in the long term, but they will have to adjust their model, particularly if you're um, better known, your type of company is better known and more obviously an option for people then they're going to start to do those sums and think, well, why would I go with a, a bigger contract where I might get a bit of initial attention, but then it kind of slides. That's a very traditional story we hear from the trad publishing. Yeah. It's not, you know, the big names. I know I noticed you went to school with Zadie Smith. Um, <laughs> the big names, you know, they get constant attention, this momentum, but th for every one of them, there's a hundred other names that had the one or two books on, on the advance and they didn't really get any traction after that. 
Yes. I mean, the other thing is we just, we pay quarterly, for example. I mean, because I used to be an artist. I've, you know, published a book. You, For some publishing companies, they pay yearly. I mean, how can anyone live on a yearly payment, you know? Uh, as we, we, we get the money in, we pay it out to the authors. That's how it's. I think it should work. Um, and there's not so many layers of people. Most of our. I mean, look. I don't. I also work with some authors who have agents. But the more people you have involved, the slower things are. It's not just that at every stage they take a bit of money out. It's also that you can't make decisions very fast. You can't. I mean, if if we think we've got something wrong with the book, we change it that day. Uh, I tend to answer emails within an hour and I'm running the company. So uh, there's this kind of flexibility and we adapt to if readers start wanting something else, we can change the cover, we can change the blurb. It's that indie kind of spirit of like being able to do everything and do it yourself and not have like 50 people who you have to pay, who you have to talk to, who you have to like reach some sort of compromise decision with and maybe that's not the best decision. But as I say, I'm not against trad publishing. They obviously produce some amazing books, which I want to read too. So yeah, I don't want to see it as them and us. So you, t- you say you tend not to do advances, but I suppose if you're investing advertising and uh, editorial rounds, that is in a way an advance. So you're investing in the book and then I'm assuming the way it works is you'll pay that off uh, from the royalties as they come through. Well, no, I mean, it's very simple. We pay the authors a royalty and we, whatever our costs are, of course, we don't take it out of their percentage. They get the same percentage, however much we spend on the, on the book. Um, I mean, we spend an awful lot of money on advertising at the moment, but obviously we think that's getting a return on investment. But um, uh, no, they, there are no costs to the author besides they get their percentage and that's it. Okay. So I'm sorry. Let me just turn this on to silent. There's a pitch for a new book coming up. <laughs> it's my accountant. Oh, um, there you go. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So that makes more sense. And that seems a very fair way yeah. of doing it. And um, uh, well, let me ask you then. You say, I mean, I can see some of the growth figures you've had look look exceptional. I'm guessing that some books fly and the books are harder work, but overall you're making great progress, yeah? Yeah, we're doing well. I mean, uh, I mean, at one point this year, we had 16 of the top 100 Kindle books, uh, which I just... Some days I can't believe it. Sometimes the authors can't believe it. Uh, we had, we've signed up, we work with Faith Martin, who's a great mystery writer. And she was, we just sent her a royalty statement. And she was like, is that for the year? I was like, no, that's the quarter. Uh, and it's fantastic. I mean, these are people who've worked off in their whole life writing books who are extremely talented. Uh, and they've never, I mean, just to put it in brass tacks, they've never earned that much money before. Um, and it's so exciting to sort of their lives are changing. Of course, you know, where my life has changed being a publisher. I mean, even in the last three months, we've sold 700,000 books plus an equal, uh, because we're exclusive to Amazon, all our books are in Kindle Unlimited. So we reckon about the same number if you add it all up in terms of Kindle Unlimited. So effectively, we've sold 1.4 million books in the last three months alone, but, um, which is a lot of books. I mean, I, I sort of sometimes can't get my head around it, but... Um, that is, uh, there's a lot of people reading these books that's terrific i mean congratulations on on that and you're obviously getting a lot right and the way you do it um and i agree with you about the exciting bit is sending that check to the author because i think uh since i've been in this industry um i have read two articles almost identical both published by i think the guardian so they're possibly just sort of recurring theme here of booker prize nominated authors who've gone back to their professions because they haven't made any money. So they, one's gone back to being a solicitor. And I can't remember what the other profession was. And you, you don't ever want to read that. You think, well, they must have sold a volume of books as a book listed author, but I'm wondering how much of the money they ever saw. Exactly. And it's, it's probably only at that point where they're nominated for the Booker Prize or win the Booker Prize that they get all that money and then the sales probably decline. Um, yeah, it's a great moment every month. I mean, every quarter, just paying out more and more money to the authors. Um, and the authors are just, they're really happy. I mean, they're, they're overjoyed. <laughs> to put it. Yeah, so they should be. Okay, well, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the detail then. So you're, you say advertising. Principally, where are you advertising and spending on? 
And I learned a lot from, I, uh, we actually signed up for Mark Dawson's course. So just want to say thank you for that. Um, I'm not trying to pitch, I'm not trying to like, you know, publicize it. I learn a lot from it. I try and learn all the time. I mean, that's the other thing about running the company as an indie is that you, you're always looking for new information. I'm following your podcast. I'm, you know, Googling stuff all the time. I always want to learn how to do things better. Haven't got it all like sorted out. It's not perfect. We could always get better. Um, yes, our main advertising platforms are Facebook and AMS ads. Uh, uh, up to about probably six months ago, it was all Facebook. Um, I sometimes see the bills and they're shocking. Um, obviously, I see the bills all the time, but just sometimes you're like, well, we spent £2,000 in three days sort of thing. Um, and then AMS has got better lately. I'm sure that I've seen you guys talking about that. Um, AMS being, you know, Amazon, advertising on Amazon itself, which makes a lot of sense because people are buying books on Amazon. Why not advertise to them on Amazon? And I'm slightly worried that I'm going to tell you this and my, the cost per click is going to rise quite a lot from my AMS ads, but okay. So we always we always remind people that um, it's actually a very small percentage that we talk to on this podcast. It sounds like thousands of people and it is thousands yeah. of people, but it's out of the wide world of people who are doing this, there's this small percentage of you and Mark and other people who know know this is happening. So I wouldn't worry too much about. Uh, okay. Um, Mark, Mark's convinced we could, we have no effect on the pos- cost per click or anything. Um, <laughs> good. Well, that's. I mean, that's that's great to hear. And um, thank you for name checking uh, the course. I'm sure Mark will be thrilled with that when I come back to chat with him again in a moment. Um, and I'm I'm intrigued by this because you know when I uh, we occasionally go to the literary launches, which is very nice, and have a glass of champagne at the um, the big I won't name them, but the big traditional publishers. And when I start to have this conversation, they're fascinated with it, but they are also clueless. And I, I mean clueless in a polite way. It's just not really in their area of expertise. And a lot of them have said to me, oh, can, you know, can I have a look at the course? That sounds amazing. And I'm thinking, you're selling books. You should really be you know, all yes, over you this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but they're not. Although recently, I mean, I have to say, because I'm always on Facebook looking at our ads, checking our you know returns, there have been more traditional publishers using quite similar Facebook ads to, you know, the indies and the self-published authors. Um, the funny thing is I see them, but they're not. What I think is they're just not, as I say, they're not integrated in the company. So they probably have a department doing that or they they outsource it to someone. And so you don't feel like they have that knowledge of the book that they're selling, the readers, their audience, you know, it's like getting a Facebook comment and responding to it straight away, as opposed to someone who runs an advertising department for a company who doesn't probably have that same engagement with readers that, that we can have. I mean, obviously, at a certain point, we're going to get so big, we will have to have more people doing all this stuff. But I still think there's a real advantage in being so hands on. Yeah, it's not like the old days of advertising where you sit and design the billboard or the the newspaper ads and so on, and then sit sort of far and forget. And Facebook advertising is a hands on experience, a day to day experience, and those little tweaks, those margins, that can be where the, yeah. the difference is. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean, as people say, how did you? How does it all? Uh, how did you become successful? You know, and I say there's no magic. It's just attention to detail on every single aspect of the book. I mean, the first thing is getting the right authors and getting great books. It always starts with that. It's then really good editing. You know, we send every book through two whole editing processes, copy editing, proofreading. Still things go wrong, but, you know, that's a lot of work on each book. And then it's the same with the marketing. It's the same with the blurb. It's the same with the cover. And being adaptive and massive attention to detail and everything and learning from the readers and listening to them as well. Listening, you know, you might get a comment on Facebook saying, oh, you know, why have you said this or this is wrong? And you're like, okay, so we'll change the blurb. Or you'll get uh, readers writing in saying, you know, when's this book coming out? Or, you know, why have you called it this? And it, it's it's all great and useful information. Yeah, that close relationship with the readers is very important. And that's a, that's a real trait with indie as well. Um, and lots of traditionally published authors will tell you they don't meet their readers very often, apart from the rather staged um, uh, exceptions where they're book signing in a, in a shop. Whereas that's a very different experience for people like Mark, who has a daily yeah. interaction with his readers and does he did I think he did a Facebook Live a couple of days ago, making some announcements with lots of comments coming down. So his and you you're having that from a publisher point of view, this this close relationship with the immediate impact the book's having on readers, which of course helps shape 
the way you market them and, and do the next book. Exactly. I love it. And uh, even the authors, I mean, they all have their own Facebook pages. We have a Facebook launch group. Uh, so, you know, the authors talk to each other. They get people who like their books talking to them. They get great feedback from the readers. But we get on our own Facebook page just a lot of feedback. And our, we have an email in every book so that people can write directly to me, tell me what's even if there's a mistake in the book, uh, you know, we want to hear about it. I mean, if we get a typo sent into us, I'm afraid we do get the occasional typo. We haven't managed to eradicate them completely. We can fix it. You know, you know how KDP works. We can fix it within an hour. Uh, compare that to maybe a traditional publisher. I mean, how many layers would that have to go through before they could fix something? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different culture, isn't it? And you do, <laughs> um, you, you say uh, you're exclusive to Amazon. You talk about KDP uh a lot, but are you using the print-on-demand service as well? So, yes. Yep. We, every single book is, um, is now paperback and uh, Kindle. We also sell um, audio rights to, we work with a really good, um, in fact, a traditional agent who sells foreign rights and audio rights and all sorts of rights called Lorella Belli, who's, you know, well enmeshed in the publishing world. And she's fantastic. And she sells, for most of our authors, she sells the audio uh um, foreign and translation rights. Um, so we're now, I suppose, we want to get our authors in all those kind of things that maybe they could have only done with if they'd had their own agent or they'd worked with a big publisher. We want to be able to get provide that for our authors as well. Yeah. So how do you manage? I mean, you've got how many Facebook campaigns have you got running today? Um, I could tell you now, but, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, about we've only got about eight okay. at the moment. But we're launching two books this week, so they'll be up till about... I mean, we have a UK and a US one for each one. Um, how do I manage? How do we manage? Well, there's you know a lot of people doing good stuff. We have a lot of different people working to, you know here, usually from home, in fact, not in this office. But um, And I'm just on my phone 24-7, as my kids would say, yep. checking things, changing things. You know, I mean, the amazing thing is 50% of the work you can monitor and sort of do from your phone. Um, so that's why people get emails from me at like 1130 at night, because I'm not in the office. I'm just on a bus or something replying to an email. And you, uh, is it a family business or you got, I mean, how big is it? Is it presumably it's not just you, Jasper. It's not just me. I have my amazing <laughs> assistant, Rudy. He's out of the office while I'm doing this interview. And there's lots of, I mean, there are lots of people. I mean, they're mostly, as I say, freelance working from their own space. We have great editors. We have a person, Jill, running our social media and blogging. You know, we have a person doing everything, but it's generally not all. They don't all have to come into my office and work nine till five. And some people say, okay, that's bad. That's the gig economy. But for a lot of people who live all over Britain, even some in like other countries, that's the way people work now. And, you know. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a transformation going on. I understand some of the concerns about the kind of the zero hours stuff, but we do the same thing. So we use you know, virtual assistants, we call them. And I'm, I think I'm right in saying I don't think any of them would want to change the arrangement because it's ultimately flexible for them. And it yes. suits our business as well, it allows us to grow or contract. Luckily, we haven't contracted yet. We've just been growing. But yeah, it's, yes. it's nice to have that option. I think in the future, we probably will. The problem we're facing is this. We're growing so fast and we can, we still got room to grow and we're still looking for really great authors. If, if you're an author watching this and you're interested in what we're doing, you can look. We have a very clear submissions page on joffybooks.com. Um, but the, 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 what we don't want to do is just turn into an old school publishing company. At the same time, we want to grow in a logical way so we may need some of their infrastructure however what we can do with our way of doing things i think is pretty good i mean and our sales figures are getting up towards an old school publishing company certainly in the digital realm yeah so let's talk about submissions then because then um, some ears will prick up here and i can imagine in particular the people who like writing have produced their their series but have always struggled because for them getting in the weeds of Facebook advertising is just not quite for them. So I can imagine them being quite drawn to this. And we're often asked, do you do ads on behalf of somebody else? And, and we don't. And yeah. financially, I think that'd be difficult. You've obviously got a process to go through to make sure you've got the right book, like a traditional publisher. Um, yeah. So can you talk a little bit? I know you say you've got this web page that's got to explain. Can you talk a little bit about the submissions process? Okay. Well, we have an open submissions policy. So... 
uh, an author can email their full manuscript. I, I still don't understand why people want three chapters. I mean, if you want to read the book, you're going to read the whole book. If you don't want to read it, it doesn't matter whether it's three chapters. It's the same thing, a synopsis, a bit about you, what kind of book you're writing, and your book sent to us, usually in Word. It's actually much easier to send a Word document to Kindle than a uh, PDF. Um, and we get a lot of submissions. I'm afraid we don't always reply to say no. We only reply to say yes, just because otherwise we'd spend all day replying to people and we want to get on with publishing some books. Um, and we really appreciate, I mean, I know it's disappointing and, you know, I know what it's like to submit a book and not get a response. I'm not, I'm totally respectful and, you know, admire people just for having written a book. Um, the, the main thing to remember, I think, for any kind of submission is the email is the first thing that anyone reads. Uh, so if you make that email to the point, you understand a bit about the company you're writing to, and you understand what type of book you've written. Um, so many times you get an email and you read the, the, it's like a blurb, but you don't actually know if they've written a mystery, a thriller, a romance novel, because they could just write at the beginning of the email, dear Jasper, I've written this mystery book, uh, it's about a detective in London. And I'd be like, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. You know, I, I look at the submissions. I look at every single one. Um, you know, I'm always hoping to get, and about half of our authors did come to us via open submissions. Um, and then at that stage, you know, we often send it off to another reader to check whether we, you know, whether what their opinion is on it. Um, uh, I can't think of anything else to do with submissions, but... The main thing is, as I say, just get that email short and sweet and telling us what type of book you've written. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing I say is like indie authors are amazing and the ones who can do it, I'm like, well, why would you come to us? But there are authors who just don't have a clue and don't want to spend all their time marketing and getting their profile up and finding someone to format their book and finding an editor and all these kind of things. And at that point, you might want to spend more of your time writing and work with us and we can you know we do all the stuff that besides the writing yeah oh, i can imagine there's authors who are good at doing it but don't want you know don't see yeah. themselves doing a lot of facebook advertising and, and do more more um writing so and I, I guess they're also in a strong position when it comes to the negotiation because they can turn their laptop around and show you their spreadsheets of what they've been doing over the last couple of years. And that's a different type of conversation um, that takes place now. Uh, I guess traditional publishers might be starting to get used to that. We've had a couple of guests yeah. on the podcast who've negotiated big deals with traditional publishers on that very basis because they said, look, this is what it's worth to me every year. So um, makes a big difference. We have actually had some traditional publishers trying to pick off our top authors. Um, uh, and they've said no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our authors have generally said no to other companies. Um, I mean, we're looking for, if you're thinking of submitting to us, the, at the moment we're looking for mysteries mainly or crime thrillers. Definitely a series helps. And we're not, we don't, I don't understand some publishers are like, if you've published it yourself before, we won't look at it. We'll look at anything. I mean, obviously, if you've published it yourself and you've sold 10 million copies, we're probably not going to add anything. But if you've published it yourself and sold a few thousand, we can look at it. We sometimes reissue whole series like that. We, we always edit and proof them and, you know, put them in our kind of um, up to our sort of hopefully standard of publishing. But we, we, we're interested in all sorts of authors, you know, with a big backlist, new authors. Um, so, you know, have a look and think about it. And I think we have a lot to offer. The, the other thing we have to offer is I think over time is, of course, we are pretty good at what we do now um, compared to someone trying to do it themselves. And we have economies of scale. So we know how to run Facebook campaigns. We know how to run AMS ads. We know how to do book bubs. You know, we know we do a lot of this. So you get better at it. Um, at that point, um, I think that gives you quite a lot to offer an author. Yeah. You say you've about half your submissions have come f from open submission. Uh, sorry, half your writers come from open submission. Probably more. Probably more than that. So where where do the others come from? Um, sometimes I, in my sneaky way, go out and look for authors. You know, just in the world, I sort of uh, see them on. I see an old edition of their book on Amazon, or you know, I I proactively seek out authors. I try not to poach authors from other companies. Generally, I don't. I don't want to do that. 
But um, it's about in, uh, indie authors whose books you like and think are going to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's exactly. Fun. And I'll get in touch with them and say maybe you could, maybe we can have a discussion about working with us. Yeah, well, that sounds fair enough. Um, I mean, it's, it is an exciting. I don't think we've spoken to anyone quite like you, Jasper. <laughs> do you know? Do you know of other companies that are operating in the same way that you are and growing like you are? Um, the one that, uh, of course, there was Bookature that was bought up by um, Hachette, I think, which was. The sort of model for us, you know, they did, I don't know if your audience know about Bookature, but they were an independent publishing company focused on digital. They did some great uh, crime thrillers, some women's fiction. Uh, they're eventually bought by one of the big publishers. But uh, I, I sort of saw what they were doing and I thought that's that's sort of what we want to do. And then, in fact, one of our one of our authors who's published a couple of books with us, um, funnily enough, founded their own publishing company called Bloodhound Books. Um, and they're doing a great job. They're growing really fast. Um, I think I think I've seen them mentioned on your podcast at some point. But I yeah, can't remember. I think Bloodhound have, and um, uh, Sp- Michael Andale also springs to mind, who um, is getting a sort of stable of, uh, of indie publishers around uh, indie writers into his um, uh, sort of what is almost by accident become a publishing company in its own own way. So. Um, what uh, the submissions just on this subject? Because I know people will be interested in this. Um, yeah. So you read it, and it goes through that process, which I can understand. Um, what sort of percentage are you getting at the moment in terms of of how many you can pick up realistically? Realistically, it's not very many. I don't want to. You know, it's probably one in a hundred or yeah. less. Um, it's just because. In order for us to work with an author, we're going to invest a lot of time and money. And it's not worth it unless we think that author is going to do really well. I mean, I say to authors, I can't guarantee anything. But if we think they're good, we hope that they're going to have a pretty much a top 50 bestseller. I mean, that's our kind of, we don't set targets for them, but that's where I feel they should be if we're going to work with them um, on, on Kindle. Uh, and hopefully we are also trying to get go for the American market as well. Obviously, that's a huge market. Um, and we want them to be able to do well in both the UK and the US. Um, so it's a very, very small percentage of our submissions that we pick up. But, uh, you know, it's in, we're happy to keep doing that, you know, and happy to keep looking at people. Yeah. Um, and you say you're looking at particularly at mystery and thriller at the moment, um, or sort of crime thrillers. Uh, is a particular reason for that? I mean, you know, romance is a is a big indie area as well. But your is it just your own personal specialisations? Or yeah, in the past we did have some uh, some romance writers. We still have them. We're still publishing them. But uh, it seems that we're we're better at selling d- detective mysteries. Basically, okay. <laughs> um, that's what I've noticed. And so we sort of put our resources where we think we're going to add the most value. Um, you know, we could publish more women's fiction or romance fiction or you know, literary fiction, but I honestly don't think we're going to add as much as we can add to crime thrillers and mysteries. Uh, and I think we've got so many, we've got like about, we've got some great authors in, the, in that field. And of course, we're building a big mailing list who are interested in those authors. And so there's a kind of, there's a building and, you know, a sort of cross fertilization of the different authors and the, their audiences. Yes, becomes um, self fulfilling, I guess, after a while uh, in that area. You're obviously a huge book fan. Jasper, are you a writer as well? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> um, in my, I, I am quite old now, I'm 42, but in my 20s, I wrote a novel which was traditionally published. Uh, so exciting. I, I mean, that's the thing I understand is I submitted it to agents. I submitted it to publishers. I remember getting that yes from the publisher and just being over the moon and seeing, I, you, do you remember Borders Bookshop? Yes. It was, used to be a big bookshop chain, which went the way of most bookshop chains. Um, and I did a reading in the Charing Cross uh, Borders, you know, and I remember like 30 people turned up. Then I did one in uh, somewhere like uh, York and two people turned up. Then I did one and no one turned up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm not doing any more of these readings because no one wants to come to them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I wrote a book uh, years ago um, and I love reading. I read all the time. Um, I read mainly literary fiction, actually, for my own enjoyment. But um, you actually have time to read books for enjoyment, as well as the huge amounts of submissions you get. 
it is crazy, but I, I just read all the time. Uh, obviously, I have a Kindle. Um, I read in the morning before I get up, you know, before I get up for work. And then I read in the before I go to bed and I wake up in the middle of the night and I read. I love reading. I mean, I just read a phenomenal number of books at the moment. Yeah. In fact, I mean, I've only been in publishing for five, six years, but uh, I read more than I ever did before. I mean, for pleasure as well as for work. Yeah. Great. Well, it sounds like you're in exactly the right place, Jasper. It's been um, really illuminating talking to you. Uh, we should just give the website again. It's joffybooks.com. That's right. Uh, people will find the submissions there. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you're. Uh, it just feels like you're in the right place at the right time. Does that feel like that to you? Yes, it's amazing. I mean, it's fantastic to be publishing and selling books and people reading them. Someone is reading... Uh, one of our books every 11 seconds that's what i worked out the other day every 11 seconds an actual human being is reading one of our books i mean just imagine that <laughs> yeah that is amazing oh i should say joffy is j-o-f-f-e that's right and you pronounced it correctly which is actually quite rare strangely for a five-letter word <laughs> there you go yes well, so that's probably the a first for the podcast that i pronounced something correctly so uh, we did well jasper look thank you so much indeed for coming on um i know you found us in a way and we found you at the same time but it's been uh, really interesting listening to you and i think uh, a lot of people in this it's another example of how this this industry is changing and it's changing quite quickly and not everybody is aware of quite how quickly things are happening and um you've um you feel to me a li little bit like a guy with a spade who's just hit a, a well of oil uh, at the moment. I don't mean that in crude, crude, excuse the pun, uh, financial terms. I just mean in, 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 in tapping into um, the way that the market is, is taking publishing. And it's exciting for everyone. More books, uh, better royalty rates for authors, as it should be, um, better access to the market and better access for readers to writers who otherwise might not see the light of day. I completely agree. Uh, firstly, it's a real honor to be on this podcast. Um, just want to say that. I honestly was made up to be asked. Um, and secondly, yes, I just wish the newspapers wouldn't publish these articles saying, you know, publishing's dead, falling ebook sales. It's nonsense. It's a really, really exciting time to be in publishing. The whole point about publishing is people writing books and getting people to read them. Who the hell cares whether it's Kindle, Indie, self-published, trad published, big six, whatever you want to call it. People, you can now publish a book the day you wrote, the day you finished it, if you want to. You know, you can, that's what it's about. It's about people publishing and reading books. That's all it's really about. I don't care about the, There's. It's just rubbish. The, the negative stuff about this is rubbish, I think. This is an amazing time to be a publisher and a writer and whatever you want to be. And a reader. I couldn't, uh, I could not, a reader. could not agree more. And uh, that sounds like a great place to leave it. Thank you, Jasper. Thanks, James. So there you go. I think you can see now why I was so excited listening to Jasper talk. First of all, he's an absolutely lovely guy. Yep. He's passionate about books. He is competitive in terms of wanting to be successful and wanting his authors to be successful and that combination is killing it in the market it is yeah it's a combination of ca candy pricing aggressive advertising um, and good covers distinct very distinctive covers good blurb and of course good books and he's doing extremely well i mean um, I think he mentioned the, in, in the interview he had 17 out of the top 100. Top, yeah, top 16 or 17, yeah, incredible. At one time, so I've, I've seen his books surrounding um, my books in the charts. Um, so it was, it's, it was good to get him on and really good just to see what he's doing to generate all that, all that traffic. Yeah. And, you know, doing extremely well on Amazon. He's an Amazon exclusive, so doing extremely well with KU, which is, is mirrors, has mirrored my experience after going back into KU. Um, after well, a couple of years, as I've mentioned on the podcast previously. So, yeah. yeah, good. well done, Jasper. Good, fantastic job. And one of the things I love about being at the book fair, uh, this type of event, is, is the passion for books, which sounds like a really silly thing to say, but it should be obvious. It isn't always, because you look at large companies and their big corporate institutions, and there's sometimes negative stuff, particularly about the traditional industry, perhaps on our side, and it's potentially warranted in one or two areas. But... Standing on those stands behind us, working in these companies, are individuals who are passionate about books and want books to be read and authors to get out there. And I really felt that with Jasper, and I think he's a credit to the industry. And um, you know, we had a quick chat earlier, and I was prophesizing the fact that 
for me, I can see the industry going that way. I can see the, the big five, which is already three, isn't it? I know the merger's taking place. Um, I can see a myriad of smaller companies publishing 20 to 30 authors each, all doing, all doing well. Yeah, potentially. I, um, I think it's I'm not entirely sure I agree with that 100%. I think there is going to be some uh, fragmentation. Although you look at someone like Booker Chur, so a company very similar to Joffy Books, similar kind of stature, um, Booker Chur swallowed up by Hasher, and it's possible that, that, that Jasper will take an offer from a big five publisher. So, you know, we, we may see fragmentation, we may see consolidation. It's, um, it's quite hard to, to hedging, know. Hedging your bets there, Dawson. I, I'm very good at hedging. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with uh, with Jasper. We'll definitely keep a track on his progress and stay in touch with him because I think it's a fascinating area. Uh, that's it from episode two of three for the London Book Fair. We're going to be back next week. We're going to talk about the difficult subject of negative reviews. And this is not just going to be an interview where you're going to have a pat on the back and say, "Get over it," you know. Buck your ideas up. It's going to be some practical tips on how to deal with negative it. reviews. As Dawson would say, it's got practical tips, uh, including a handout to go with it of what you should do and how you should react to Tough them. Tough enough. And how you can make them work for you, you in the future. Good. You're a slave driver. Right. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Have a great week writing. And a great week selling. Hey, See you next week. It's like a double act. You've been listening to the Self Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.